Okay, so I just got off work, so my forehead's nice and shiny, and I'm wearing glasses. Hey, Dumpster Divers, and welcome back to a new episode of Rainbow High is a show that exists. For anybody new here, I am a 31-year-old architecture student who should be working on his airport design right now, but instead I am reacting to a couple of episodes because I need to get caught up because a whole five people asked me to. So I didn't finish season two and I think this might be a longer one because I think we're covering about like four episodes of content. I stopped doing these because they just weren't really getting any views and they're a pain in the ass to make and so it might be a little easier just to do a couple episodes at a time instead of every episode that comes out but you guys know me. My channel is sporadic and crazy and I just do whatever the fuck I want. For the season two finale, it was Radiant Week and Ramona Barnes, who Bella Parker is obsessed with, came to the school and she's an old friend of Miss Wright's. I'd like to introduce a very special guest judge of this year's Radiant Week, legendary Broadway designer and a dear friend from our own days at Rainbow High, Ramona Barnes. <laughs> So the students show off their final projects. Um, Amaya and Daphne ended up making like the big Amaya talking about how they shifted perspective because she's literally like two stories tall. Sunny and Brianna Dulce uh, made an interactive kind of touch light projection onto the main horse that's in like the hallways of Rainbow High. Also, Violet's like locked in a bathroom and she was doing a live stream and then everybody ignored her. I don't know why. And then Jade, Jet Dawson, and Robin Sterling all ended up working together and they used like a super special fabric from Indonesia that they set up like a spider web and then they put Robin in it upside down in her pajamas and it's just kind of funny. But shift your perspective. You can become the one spinning it. And the trap becomes a tool. <clears throat> I do need help. Then Emmy and Ruby did an uh, art installation where the room looks like a room, but if you shift your perspective, you can see that it's a forced perspective and it's actually like not three-dimensional. It's just set up in a way that makes you think it is. And that's actually kind of really cool. I don't get it. They just made a normal room? What, it, what? The airbrush didn't find details to look hyper-realistic. Even that neon sign is painted. We decided to use forced perspective. And then Poppy and the Rockstar Girls, they did like an interactive uh, music thing where you're invited to come into the space and move objects around to create a sound so that you can see how music works through uh, Poppy's perspective. So we made it possible to rock out using anything and everything. Come on! Grab something and make your own song! And then we're checking back in with Violet in the bathroom and she's starting to go crazy and talk to objects that are in the bathroom with her all on her live stream that for some reason people are ignoring. Probably because the projects are presenting, but you think somebody would look at their phone. Sunny, I just don't get it. How do you stay so positive all the time? I don't tell you often enough how much I admire you. All of you. And then Bella, Gabby, and Cheryl all together created some magic fucking mirror that like scans you and then projects an image of you in clothing so you can look at yourself in different perspectives. Honestly, that's pretty fucking cool. And I kind of hope that they do like an interactive mirror playset thing. That would be cool where you can put your doll in it and then it looks like it's projecting onto the mirror, but then the mirror can have like a two-way thing where like a screen pops up and shows that character interacting with it in a different outfit. I think that'd be kind of cool. Ours can show you, you, from all angles, so you know that your look will turn heads and open minds. 
And then we check back in with Violet again, and she's like talking about how she tries to be authentic with herself as a social media influencer, but there's been stuff that she lied about. Like she used a hashtag no filter when she used to filter silly stuff like that. And then she starts crying and gets really raw and emotional, according to Miss Wright. I'm a fraud. I once posted a selfie with hashtag no filter, but I totally used a filter. My son kids trip to Cali. Background swap. I never meant to lie to you. I did it for the lie. Wow, an impressively raw look from Miss Willow. Hello, is someone there? And then apparently she <laughs> wins an award for crying on a live. Thank you so much for this award for outstanding solo piece. And I would like to remind you that everything I said or did during my time in that bathroom was all part of the plan to, uh, help change your perspective of influencers. For our final prize of the evening, one we're aptly calling the Hit the Road Award. This team's innovative technology gave us all a fresh perspective to see reality from new angles. Congratulations, Bella, Cheryl, and Gabriella for your all angles holographic meeting. And then apparently because they win, they get to go to Pacific Coast, which is how we transition into season three, episode one of Rainbow High is a show that exists. Man, I always forget when I wear glasses that I have a five head. Okay, so apparently Pacific Coast High is a reality show that everybody in the Rainbow High universe knows about. And it's really cool that they're introducing, obviously, other schools. Like, we have Rainbow High, Shadow High, and Pacific High. Or is it Pacific Coast High? Anyway, those other schools. And I think that's fine because it's, like, world expanding and everything. And it gives us an excuse to buy more dolls, etc. And then to figure out what's happening at Pacific Coast High, they do a show within a show showing one of the reality TV episodes of Pacific Coast High, which is probably how they're going to keep introducing it throughout the season, is they'll bring it in as like a show that the other schools watch. Because honestly, I don't know about you guys, but like the Pacific Coast arc I don't care about as much as I care about the Shadow High arc. I feel like it was Rainbow High, Series 3, Pacific High, and then it was like Shadow High. And now we just all care about Shadow High and that's what we're focused on. My life isn't picture perfect. I just know what lens to use. I have three rules. Don't mess with my friends, don't mess with my fashions, and no surfing after dark. Bad vibes are like fake pearls. I'm allergic to both. The ocean is the biggest inspiration for my art. It's deep, like me. All I care about is self-care and skincare and drama. I'm the most famous person on this ship. Okay, so they're talking about their new headmistress that's coming to Pacific Coast High, which is obviously Paris Hilton. And um, in MGA fashion, um, I, I know now because I was talking about like my 2000s, like nostalgia self talking about Paris Hilton and like how I like her. I thought she was funny, etc. But people did let me know how incredibly problematic she is. And, um, yeah, I would definitely, like, look up why she's problematic, if you want to know. Um, it's, yeah, it's not good. But we're just here to watch the show. The whole show is supposed to be about, like, drama, etc. And a lot of people are talking about how they don't like um, Phaedra's voice. And it, it's annoying and grating and everything, but I think the worst voice in the whole series is Stella Monroe's. I It is such a harsh, forced British accent. I don't get the direction, like the creative direct direction behind it. Like you can still have a British accent without it being uh, like cheese grating into my ear. Okay, so they're talking about like the other characters and everything and Phaedra's talking shit on Finn and Finn's like, I don't understand why Phaedra would be saying anything about me. And it's because he jumped in the pool and splashed her with water, I guess, even though they're all in swimsuits and apparently their campus is outside on a beach. 
Hey, Pacific Coast High, your new headmistress is me, Paris Hilton. This party's going to be sick! <gasps> Unless someone messes it up. I won't say who would do that. <clears throat> then... Phaedra totally has it out for me, and I have no idea why. And so Margot, Haley, and Simone are all talking about how Margot has a huge crush on Finn and how they're besties and how romantic it would be to date your bestie. And then we um, transition into some more drama between the, all the students. No! Your eyes are always glued to the lens! Simone, you need to watch your feet! You left your makeup on the ground, Phaedra! Beauty crime! Excuse me? Maybe if you had a makeup line you were passionate about, you would know how it feels when someone walks all over your product. But you don't. So don't even act like you know what you're talking about. What do you mean? Did you see what happened? I'm just focusing on my performance for Paris tonight. I can't get involved. I can't strain my voice. And then Paris Hilton shows up while everybody is arguing. Well, hello, Pacific Coast High. Sorry, Harper. Now I'm the most famous person on this show. So Paris comes in to help solve the problem about them uh, breaking the makeup and everything. And then Paris hands Phaedra a makeup repair kit because she never leaves her home without it, which is very Paris Hilton. And then Paris starts passing out like advice to all the students and she's telling Kaylee like, Hey, you're a really good lifeguard and friend and everything, but sometimes you need to take time for yourself. And then Harper, who is a talented singer and everything, who likes to protect her voice, uh, Paris is like, yeah, but you still need to like talk to your friends and everything and work out your issues and stuff like that. Or you'll lose your passion or something, I don't know. And then Simone, who's a photographer, it's a very stereotypical kind of thing where it's like, you're always looking at life through a lens, but sometimes you need to experience life on your own. Which is, you know, good advice. Sometimes you just need to be in the moment. And then Margot and Paris communicate telepathically, apparently. And then Margot is like, you're so right, thank you. Margot. You're so right, thank you. And then her advice to Phaedra is that while Phaedra likes to be the star of everything, if you let other people into your light, it helps you shine brighter, which is basically like you can share the glory, you know, with your friends. Because, I mean, I do the same thing. I share, you know, the glory in the hole in those truck stop bathrooms that your dad visits. And then Paris lets Finn know that while you've been crushing your dreams, um, all these girls at the school are crushing on you. Paris is talking about tomorrow's plans where um, they're gonna try and work on being their best selves and everything. And that's like a really good, like positive message overall. Um, sometimes I think I'm just a jaded adult. So when I hear people being like, you just need to be your best self and like all this toxic positivity, sometimes it's exhausting because it can really detach you from reality and like actual expectations. But I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to be that deep. It's just Paris Hilton on a kid's show. And then they all start partying because uh, they all work together to create this party to celebrate Paris arriving to the school of six whole students outside. And then it just does like a next time on Pacific Coast. Next time on Pacific Coast. That's it. What happens at the party? Right? Ugh, they always leave us wanting more. And then the the 10 minute runtime of this episode, it's about like seven and a half minutes of actual content. And then they do like another music video. Also like maybe unpopular opinion, but I feel like OMG overall does better songs than Rainbow High. Like the Shadow High theme fucking slaps, but everything else from Rainbow High has just been kind of like, not bad at all. It's just, it doesn't hit as hard as like an OMG song or the Shadow High theme. But the Pacific Coast theme song thing is very uh, California, Miley Cyrus, Malibu kind of sounding. 
episode two of season three was actually released a day before my birthday, April 1st, uh, April Fool's Day. And that's when we kind of get like this teaser of Shadow High coming in. So Gabby, Bella, and Cheryl all return from Pacific Coast High, you know, without like showing us what happened. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just going to be like a show within a show. And they'll show us like snippets. Uh, kind of like if you've seen American Dad and they do that like golden turd thing, like where it like comes in every once in a while, but it's not done a lot. So I'm thinking that's how they're going to do it. That's probably how they can afford to pay Paris Hilton, et cetera. Also went probably like sales from her doll because I'm pretty sure it's like a hundred dollar doll or something stupid like that. Uh, and then we finally get an A's entrance, which it's been a while. I really love the A's and I'm really sad that we've only gotten an Avery doll so far and we don't have an Aiden doll anywhere like in the leaks, but there is an Ainsley doll in the leaks. So I'm excited to get her. Part of what happens throughout this episode is um, stuff starts happening like little pranks. Things don't work the way they're supposed to. Sunny is actually animating this little scene on her computer. And I want you guys to look at it because I think it's so fucking cool. Because Rainbow High 2D looks amazing. So check this out. being pulled into an old-timey world with no color in sight! Huh? And then Sunny kind of, like, hints at what might be happening because she's like, well, I would never go without color in my art, <gasps> but she would. And I think we're gonna learn who she is. And then Daphne is showing, like, a pearl necklace that she made. Where she used, like, this extra strong, like, tensile material to keep the beads looped. And then... She rotates the mannequin it's on, it turns on a hairdryer, and then it's like heat dissolving thread or something stupid like that. I don't know. Um, sounds cool though. How could this happen? I used <gasps> heat dissolving thread? And then Poppy is trying to showcase some music, and then obviously it's been messed with because, you know, it's the April Fool's episode. Hot me, fuck me, daddy better make me can't stop it. And I'm just kidding. The, the computer actually says, Rainbow High, we're coming for you. Very ominous. And then everybody at Rainbow High is pretty shook by all the pranks. All those beads, all on the floor. Maybe it was just a prank? These so-called pranks reek of Shadow High. <gasps> yes, totally Shadow High. I thought Shadow High was just another school. What's the tea? You really think she was involved in all this? And then they're starting to come to the realization that all these pranks are probably being caused by Shadow High. And then Violet and Sunny are whispering in the back and Violet's like, do you think that she's a part of this? Which, you know, we learn who she is in just a couple minutes. And then Miss Wright um, calls an assembly where everybody shows up and then Miss Wright actually hears it over the intercom and she's like, that's not me. She's like, ugh. Do we have to do this every single year? And then she goes and addresses the students in the auditorium. And the prank on her is that her voice is being um, messed with through the microphone. Also, I really want a Miss Wright doll because I want like the whole Madison family as dolls. Then while Miss Wright is on stage, a screen drops down. There's a projection video. And it's basically those two really awesome bitches from Shadow High that I think they're supposed to be twins. And they are talking about how it's Shadow High's turn to step into the light and they are going to cause an eclipse because an eclipse is coming, which is like Shadow High's whole uh, tag and marketing technique. Rainbow High better be prepared. Shadow High is coming for you in a major way at Rainbow Vision. Rainbow High has wronged Shadow High too many times, and this time, Shadow High will finally get their turn to step into the light. An eclipse is coming. 
And then the students start discussing, like, the rumors of Shadow High, like, pranking them and being epic and talking about, like, healthy competition between schools and stuff like that. <laughs> Did you see their faces? <laughs> I was almost too busy judging their basic outfits to notice. I absolutely love them. They're so far my favorite characters from Shadow High. And um, they are driving this truck Jeep thing that I'm hoping we get like a, you know, like a response to like the Rainbow High color changing car where we get like a shadow Jeep or something. That'd be cute. So then they're driving away and we cut back to the girls back in the dorm room and Sunny talks about her evil twin sister literally never been mentioned up until this point but i'm glad because luna madison is probably one of my favorite shadow high characters it's time i tell you the truth about shadow high huh i'm worried some of these pranks might start to target all of you because i know someone who goes there what, what? what? You? You? my evil twin sister And yeah, the whole like my evil twin 90s soap opera thing, um, it's a little cheese ball, obviously, but it'll make for a fun dynamic. And I love the Madisons, so I'm glad that Sunny has a sister. FYI, she's one of the dolls I bought and she's on her way. And then that's how we transition into the latest episode of Rainbow High is a show that exists titled Welcome to Shadow High, Black Heart Emoji. Season 3, Episode 3, Shadow High. And then we open up to a scene of Chanel walking through a green screen landscape, artsy kind of thing, where she's showing off her outfit and being a model. So Luna and Chanel kind of start arguing about whose film that they're shooting because while well, yes, Chanel is the, is it Chanel or Chanel? While well, she is the star of the thing, um, it wouldn't be even being produced if Luna wasn't in charge of filming and directing and everything. And then Natasha, the super white one, she is like, yeah, no, Chanel can go home and I'll step in for her. You know, just being a sneaky little bitch. Also, apparently Natasha's from the Netherlands. Afterwards, Chanel and Luna go back to arguing about um, how they have, like, storyboards that Chanel agreed to, and she's not following through. Uh, Luna doing everything that Chanel asked for, like, reverse osmosis water and other stupid stuff that, like, a typical crazy actor celebrity would ask for. So Ash notices them arguing goes up to him and they're like guys you don't need to be fighting and it, but if you're going to could you at least make it more entertaining which is like shady and funny and like haha how's it going i just learned dutch i mean with the drama <laughs> oh it's fun to watch i love a good volley aren't luna and chanel friends yep chanel luna don't fight but if you do need to fight, at least make more of a scene. Come on, entertain me. Seriously. Go away, be gone. And then Chanel quits and she's storming out. And then the evil twin bitches show up and I just love them so much. And now you're walking this way. Ugh, they are just like the most bitchy dominating bad guys. And um, I know I've expressed this before on my channel, but I just want to reiterate, I love bitchy characters in shows like this where everybody is so super fucking nicey nice all the time. It's just good to see some people that are just mean and they're just mean, it's okay. Like they don't need like a redemption arc. Sometimes I think it's dangerous to show like bad people getting these redemption arcs like sometimes it's great obviously but sometimes like i think it's important for people to understand like some people are just bad people and it's okay that they're bad people and you can walk away from them 
it, it'll save yourself abuse and time and everything. And I think when people try to like sympathize with their abusers, it, it can get muddy. That's a little more deep than I think this kid show is going for, but you know, it's just something I think about. So the twins are asking everybody in the room if uh, they've heard of Shadow High or <clears throat> if they've heard of Rainbow High and if they think Rainbow High is better, which is like such a loaded, like nobody's going to be like, yeah, I do at Shadow High. Like what? And then they're like, okay, well, if that's how you feel, you're going to have to prove it. So the twins are showing everybody at Shadow High that's in that room. Um what the Rainbow High people have been working on because obviously somebody's been spying on the Rainbow High girls and boy. And uh, just showing the projects and everything that they've been working on and it's like stiff competition. And we are not happy. <laughs> Is that your evil twin sister? Yeah. And then they show uh, the project where Sunny did the interactive light touching thing on the horse. And then Chanel like gasps and like looks over at Luna and she's like, isn't that your evil twin sister? And I love the idea of Sunny Madison being the evil twin sister that uh, I just love that so much. So then the twins, after showing the little clips of all the projects and everything, including the runway fashion show where Jade looks like Frankie Stein, um, they're like, their art is pedestrian. It's boring. It, uh, why are they so obsessed with themselves? And it's like, Shadow High, you're obsessed with Rainbow High, obviously. Like, nobody is, like, more a fan of you than your haters. Like, they are obsessed with you. They want to know everything you're doing. And that's a fan. So then the Shadow High kids are talking about how, like, obviously Rainbow High is very talented and shadow high are very talented and that's why they're rivals and then the twins are like yeah but are you talented though are you gonna stay here in shadow high if you're not talented and like i don't know it seems like with the twins obviously like for the other students they're just like oh rainbow high shadow high like we're rivals but for the twins man it seems like personal almost and i wonder why so in the spirit of friendly rivalry between another school, the girls, uh, the, <clears throat> the twins end up making everybody at Shadow High have to have their midterms due tonight instead of like a week from now or something like that. And then they just make a joke like, is this school even sanctioned? And then the girls are like, if you have to ask that, you shouldn't even be here, which is like red flag number eight. So the Shadow High kids they all decide like yeah no we're gonna get this midterm done and they're gonna work together so i think chanel and luna put aside their um differences for a second and then they're talking about kicking their midterms but also apparently natasha is a chemist because she just made an explosion in the back of the room while trying to create a perfume thanks the other half of the smell is essence of lily i'm just waiting for the mixture to cure so Luna and Chanel obviously make up and then they kind of talk it over right now. But one thing I kind of don't like is uh, how much Luna has to give up to make Chanel happy and how Chanel doesn't think that she's like not also in the wrong, basically. It's just a weird, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Hey, can I talk to you? Okay, so? I cut the flying scene. Of course you did. Yeah. Our film didn't need it. You were right. <gasps> Luna Madison admits she's wrong? Uh, no. It's part of the creative process to take risks, make mistakes, and... Uh, sure, I was wrong. That's what I thought. So, will you work with me again? Of course. You know how to get my good side, which is all my sides. So the twins show up and they're like, time's up, let's see your work. And we do a little montage. Are we supposed to be impressed? Let's find out. Messy. And thought provoking. Huh. Painfully in my face. I like this. Uh-uh. Kill the sneaker. Put a heel on that pedestal. And I don't know why. It's obviously not shade to Barbie, or maybe it is. 
Finally, Naomi smells good. Ugh. Huh, I would wear this dress. Not if I wore it first. And the twins are like, huh, I could see myself wearing this. Uh, which I'm not the biggest fan of Chanel's dress, but I do love her as a doll. So I'm excited to get her. After doing a good job with their midterms that they ended up having to do in like six hours, uh, they are greeted with the twins being like, this is great or whatever, but you better win every single competition with Rainbow High. Otherwise, it's going to be bad. And I feel like Rainbow High has too much plot armor for like Shadow High to be winning. So I don't really know how that's going to work. But the competition between Shadow High and Rainbow High isn't over. This is the beginning of the most intense school rivalry of your lives. You better win every competition. If you disappoint us, it's over. Now everyone, go! Except for you, Luna Madison. We want to talk to you. <laughs> So yeah, that is uh, season three, episode three of Shadow High is a show that exists, apparently. And um, I like it. I like the longer runtime. You can do a lot more with the story with this longer runtime. And um, I like the Shadow High arc. I love the dolls. I'm excited to see how the rivalry plays out, and it should be a gay old time. But uh, yeah, you guys let me know. Um, I will be unboxing some of the Shadow High dolls, and I'll give you guys an honest, not paid for review of the dolls crazy how that'll work um but i'm super excited to see them and i know they're going to be good but i think the dolls people got sent in pr are probably a little bit fancier anyway thank you so much and i will see you guys in a new episode of rainbow slash shadow high is a show that exists when i get around to it sorry about that this is already really long i can tell i've been recording for over an hour Bye.